We are going to answer one of the most common product interview questions, and they're called debugging or root cause analysis questions. And they sound like Uber cancellations have gone up. What's going on? We're going to give you a foolproof framework to help you ace this question and get the job. Let's go. So today we're going to use the example of Uber's cancellations have gone up. What is going on? And we're going to go through a five part framework, starting with let's clarify the question with some questions. The first thing I want to clarify is define the actual metric that's going up. And this is really going to help me come up with specific hypotheses. So make sure that if the metric they give you is ambiguous, ask further questions. So in this case, you said cancellations have gone up. Is that rider cancellations or driver's cancellations? And also, are we talking about the cancellation percentage or the total number of cancellations? On the second question, I asked because if total number of cancellations are going up, but the number of rides booked are also going up, well, that might be expected. So let's assume the interviewer tells us it's the rider cancellation percentage. Great, that helps me focus on one area. By the way, a pro tip here is that when you ask questions, share your thinking behind those questions. Through all of these interviews, interviewers want to understand how you're thinking. So sometimes they may not necessarily agree with you, but when you share your thinking, there's a higher inclination that they'll understand that you have logical thinking. Another thing I want to understand is the time period that this drop came under. And this also helps me filter out hypotheses that might not be likely. So I'll ask a question like, so cancellations have gone up, but over what time period? Has this been a steady decline over the last six months? Or is it something happening within the last couple of weeks, month? And have we seen a similar pattern before? Let's assume they tell us that it's over the last two weeks only, and there was no similar pattern before. Next, I'll want to ask, so cancellation rate for riders have gone up, but what is the change in percentage that it's going up by versus our benchmark? The answer to this also helps me filter out hypotheses. Of course, something like a 10% increase is going to be much bigger than a 1% increase. So imagine they say the average of our cancellations was 5% and then it doubled to 10%. And the last clarifying question I would ask the interviewer is, did you want me to get towards a specific answer that you have in mind? Or did you want me to generally explore and share my thinking? This is important to realize because a lot of people answering these questions think, oh, there is one right answer. But whenever I ask this question in interviews, I don't have a specific answer I want them to get towards. I just want to understand how they diagnose problems. So the second part of the framework is jumping into identifying the levers that are going to help us understand and come up with hypotheses. So the first thing I want to cover here is who are the users for this product? So in this case, we have the drivers and the riders. So we're realizing supply versus demand. And note, we did call out that the riders percentage of cancellations have gone up, but this doesn't necessarily mean it's a rider specific problem. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a bit. Next, I want to cover the user flow. So how does this product work? So on the user side, they'll first open the app, then type in the destination of where they're going and where they're at right now. Then a list of prices and different services or different rides would come up. They choose one. There's a process of matchmaking where a driver is being found. So it's called a processing part. And this is a big area where people first have the opportunity to cancel. Next, a driver accepts or declines, then the ride is confirmed and you get a page that shows you the ETA your driver is away from picking you up and how long it's going to take for the ride to be completed and how much it costs. And here is another area where a customer can cancel. The next thing I could do here is some segmentation to understand if I break this out by, let's say, region, are we seeing the cancellations coming from a specific region, a specific city or country, etc because that could tell us maybe there's regional specific things that are leading to this problem and it's more of an external effect 
than it is something internal. Another thing I can cut it by is the day. So maybe there are specific days over the last two weeks that led our total number of cancellations or the cancellation rate to be pulled. Or maybe there was a couple days that led our cancellation rate to go all the way up. Whether something to do with weather or some event that was going on. Here you want to give a rationale why you would segment by specific factors like I just shared. So let's say the interviewer tells us that there was nothing specific on region or day. So how would I proceed? So tip here is I'm going to take a second to summarize what I know so far. So that helped me think of hypotheses. So what I know so far is that rider cancellation percentages have gone up over the last two weeks and it has doubled from 5% to 10%. So pretty darn drastic. There is no regional or day specific segmentation. So it seems like a cross regional problem. So my third step is to start hypothesizing and figuring out ways to validate my hypothesis or invalidate it here. I'm going to use the user flow to help me drive some hypotheses on why cancellations have gone up. My first hypothesis might be are cancellations attributed to the section where you type in your destination, where you're at today, because if people are typing in the wrong address, whether it's their starting address or the ending address that might lead to an immediate cancellation. Hence a follow up question I might be asking data for is, are we seeing that these people that are canceling are then booking another ride right after? And maybe my hypothesis is that in the last two weeks, we changed something in the user interface. Let's say the drop pin button where you place where you're at today is kind of changing how it looks or maybe the algorithm to determine where you are, especially when you're in taller buildings was shifted a bit. And hence when people drop in where they are, it wasn't actually where they were. So that messed up and people had to then cancel their rides because they noticed the address was wrong. So how I would want to validate or invalidate is to then search how many of these cancellations led to a reorder with an updated address that was nearby. I could also validate invalidate by maybe calling some of these customers who have canceled and ask them another way of validating invalidating instead of guessing, we can basically survey some of these customers and bring up a quick form to ask them, well, why did you cancel and give them a couple of reasons and give them an other slot to see what they say. So another tip for you here, when you're calling out hypotheses, make sure they're specific to the question or the product that you're talking about. So for example, a lot of people like to give the hypothesis, oh, well, there's competition. So that's generic. But if you say something like, oh, you might have competition like Lyft and Uber are always fighting each other to get the best price for customers. And that is what could be leading people to cancel because the second narrative shows that you actually thought about how the competitive pressures would impact this metric we're talking about versus just throwing in something on a checklist like competition. The next hypothesis I have is related to pricing over the last two weeks. Did we see our competitors reduce prices? Because I know for me, I'm usually shopping around between Lyft and Uber to get a cheaper price. And sometimes after I've ordered the Uber ride, I go check Lyft and see if there's a cheaper prices and then I will cancel the Uber ride. So maybe Lyft in the last two weeks decided to give extra discounts or to offer cheaper pricing. And how would I validate this by go using Lyft versus Uber in specific locations and see if the price is cheaper. My third hypothesis is, you know, that section where the ride is being processed. So you've made your request and the page is showing finding drivers. So that's the first opportunity where someone can cancel. So first I would want some data to understand are the cancellations this 10% mostly in this phase or after a driver is matched, because if it's before the match happens, the cancellations could be because that processing time in finding a driver is taking too long. And hence over the last two weeks, have we seen a change in supplier demand? So if we saw less drivers, that may make it harder for existing riders to find a match with a driver. But if we've seen increased demand, even with the same number of drivers, 
that could also sort of throw the equilibrium off where it makes it harder for you as riders to find a ride that's nearby. So how would I validate or invalidate this? I would go look at the data to check the average time, the average processing or matchmaking time of the rider being matched to a driver and compare this to the time before the two weeks to see if we've seen an increase. And I would also go check the number of active drivers and the number of active orders to see if that has gone up. Lastly, another hypothesis is that when rides are confirmed and people see the ETA, it is way too long so people cancel. I know usually for me, if it takes a driver more than 10 or 15 minutes to get to me, there's a higher chance that I'm gonna cancel the ride, either because I found an alternative or in that time I've had time to go look at Lyft for a cheaper price. So I might check before the two weeks versus during the two weeks where our cancellations have gone up. Have we seen a difference in the time it takes a driver to come to the rider? And again, this is another example where it's not just a rider specific problem, but it could be a driver specific problem where there might be a lack of drivers and that leads to wait times to be longer because drivers have to come from far away to support certain riders. Step number four, I'm going to prioritize which of my hypotheses that I want to spend more time validating, invalidating and coming up with solutions for. I'm going to narrow them down based on some of the data that I shared before on that this happened within the last two weeks, it was a 10%. It is now a 10% cancellation rate versus a 5%. So that leads me to two key hypotheses. The first is on the pricing bit, and the second is that the wait time has increased for riders, whether before they got matched to a driver or after they got matched to a driver and they're waiting for the driver to pick them up. I'm deep prioritizing my first hypothesis the drop pin hypothesis, because I don't believe that that's going to double cancellation rates. Because when people check their destination and where pickup is, they're usually pretty savvy about it or they'll double check, but that's just me. So I might prioritize that hypothesis last to validate or invalidate. So step number five, based on some of these hypotheses, how would I fix this? So if we're looking at the pricing problem, basically that our competitors are offering cheaper prices, I might do simple things like price parity with Lyft, basically matching the prices that we're seeing with them or marketing ourselves to better emphasize that we're better on certain features. For example, maybe we're faster at getting the driver to the rider, or maybe we have features that make people feel more safe in an Uber ride than a Lyft ride. For the problem of matching drivers and riders taking too long, I might first have to find out it like, is the problem because there's not enough drivers or there's way too much supply. Either way, a couple of solutions for that. I might increase the incentives for drivers to get more of them to go back to the platform. Or I might send out a bunch of notifications for drivers that are not active to get them back on the platform to let them know there's a whole host of demand where they can earn more. Or maybe I might change the algorithm that's used in matching drivers and riders in a different way that'll make it a bit more efficient or maybe relax some of the constraints on the algorithm so that riders are always able to find a driver, even if it's a bit more inconvenient for the driver. So what are the five things we covered to answer debugging root cause analysis questions? You also want to know what are the things you should not do for these type of debugging questions. So take a look at this video, which shows you what typical candidates do and big no-nos that do not show thinking. And I will see you guys in the next video.